Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mrs. G. In this video, we are going to be looking at the 2023 Geography Paper 1. Let's get to it. Alright, so in this video, I am going to be working the Paper 1 with you. I'm going to be working it by telling you my thoughts, telling you what I think about when I see the question and how I would come up with the answers. So you can pretty much use the same thought process while you're in the exam. Hopefully that will work for you. So if you like that, if you like the video, if you like how I'm explaining it, if you understand it that way, or if you want to see something different, you can always let me know in the comments. I will listen and then I will change it up for you. So let's go. Question number one, it says a scale of 1 to 20,000 on a map would indicate that. So it didn't tell us any of the units. So we cannot assume that the unit is, for example, centimeter or kilometer and so on. So we just have to say exactly what it is, which is B, where it says one unit on the map represents 20,000 units on the ground. So whatever that unit is, that is what it is representing. So number one is letter B. Number two, which island is located at 16 degrees north, 61 degrees west? So let me try to look at that. 16 degrees north, 61 degrees west. So north would have been above zero degrees this is 10 so the zero degree mark would be somewhere down there so so that means everything up here is north right so it says 16 degrees north if you notice the numbers are increasing in another direction so we have 10 then we have 15 so that means 16 is somewhere up here so right then it says 61 degrees west so we have 55, 60, 65, so we are going in a westerly direction. So 61 would have been somewhere over this side. It's pretty much a matter of letting the numbers overlap. So say 16 and then 61. So the options are Trinidad. Trinidad is nowhere near there. Barbados, nowhere near there. Dominica, yes and St. Lucia, not there. So up here, so Dominica. So that will be 16 degrees north and 61 degrees west. So the answer for number two would have been letter C, which is Dominica. Number three. Well, let's do number four since it's right there. It says an airplane leaves Port of Spain, Trinidad for Kingston, Jamaica. In which general direction should it fly? So it is leaving from Port of Spain for Kingston. So our starting point is Port of Spain, which is in Trinidad. So that's right here. So let's say this is where we're starting from. Let me clean that up so you can see it properly. All right, so I've cleaned it up properly so that you can see what we're doing. So airplane leaves port of spain so we're leaving from here somewhere here and we are going to kingston so we'd be going in this direction line is kind of not straight but you get it so it's since port of spain is my starting point that's my north south line and this is east and this is west so that means if you look at it i'm going in a northwestern direction. So my answer for number four would have been letter D. So let's look at number three now. It says, which city is located 1,000 kilometers from Santo Domingo? So let's find Santo Domingo. There are so many cities there, so it's best to look at the options first. So we have San Juan, Kingston, Montego Bay, and Port-au-Prince. So San Juan, Kingston, Montego Bay, Port-au-Prince, and we're leaving from Santo Domingo, and it needs to be a thousand kilometers. So San Juan is right here. That's not a thousand. By the way, how do we know the thousand? It's by looking at the scale. So C0, one thousand. So this is the length that we need to see between the two points. And how would you figure that out in the exam? I'm just looking and guessing, by the way. 
but how would you figure that out in your exam for accuracy? You'd get a strip of paper, you place your strip of paper along the scale, and you mark off the zero, mark off the 1,000, that's your length. And that, now you're going to place that along the different options to try to find which one is the answer. So since we're just kind of looking now, when we look between Santo Domingo and Puerto Rico, no, and San Juan, yes, it would not be a thousand kilometers. The other option, I think one was Montego Bay, one was King and Porta Prince, right? So Santo Domingo to Porta Prince, it's too close as well. Santo Domingo to Kingston, a kind of lookish, not really. So Santo Domingo to Montego Bay looks more like the thousand. So I would put Montego Bay for the answer. So again, when you are doing this in your exam, you would actually take a strip of paper, mark it off to ensure that you have the accurate answer. So if you are watching and you like what you are seeing and you want to see more of that, please subscribe to the channel. I am going to be doing more geography videos where we actually go through the paper and tell you how to figure out the answers to the questions and like the video of course and share it with another geography student okay all right items five to seven refer to the following table which shows the average monthly rainfall and temperature at a particular location in a caribbean country what is the average annual temperature at this location so all right i'm not gonna assume that you know how to read the the table so let me tell you at the top here we have month and then we have all the months going across so january february march april may and so on right to december then we have the temperature in degrees celsius this is telling us the temperature for january so 24 degrees for january and it does the same for all the other months and rainfall in millimeters this is telling us the rainfall for january which is 103 millimeters here and it would tell you the same for the other months so that's the information that you're going to use in order to answer the questions five six and seven so what is the average annual temperature at this location so it says average meaning all of them together and uh, annual for the whole year temperature at that location so how are you going to do this you are going to add all of the temperatures for that year so 24 plus 24 plus 26 and so on and so on you add up everything then you are going to divide that by the number of things that you add it up by. So we have 12 months in the year, so we're dividing that answer by 12. And then you will look for your answer down here, right? You're going to look for your answer. Um, I can't add it up now, but from estimation then, all right, I'll add it up. But let me tell you still, from estimation, I'm seeing 26, 26, 26. 26 26 26 mostly 26 i'm guessing it's i'm guessing that it's b but i'm adding it up as we go along 314 all right yes yes so it works out to be b so the answer is 26.2 degrees celsius if you have a question feel free to type it in the comments i will respond to you once i see it and I will give you some further explanations if you need that. Number six, the rainfall pattern on the table indicates that, and they give you some options, so you have to read each one to figure out which one the answer is. So rainfall pattern indicates that rainfall occurs throughout the year. So we have 103, 93, 88, and so on. So yes, we're seeing rainfall throughout the year, but we're not sure yet. We have to look at the other options first. Most of the rainfall occurs at the beginning of the year. That is not true. We're seeing lots of rainfall happening down in the ending of the year. So that one is out. There are small amounts of rainfall. No. There is little variation in the rainfall from month to month. Um, no. Because... This is 103, this is 93, then this is 88, then we have a big old 201 there. So we have variation, enough variation between um, the months. So we're going to go with A for number 6. 
Number seven, the type of climate experienced at this location may be described as, so we have tropical continental, tropical marine, equatorial, and savanna. Definitely not savanna. Savanna is super dry. Think um, Lion King kind of vibe. Uh, well, sometimes kind of dry. And then based on the temperature, it is twenty between 24 to 28 tropical marine. For equatorial, you would have more rainfall and you were, your temperatures would be a little higher than what we are seeing here. So for number seven, we're going to go with B, that is tropical marine climate. And number eight, it's another map. So if you notice, guys, when you are doing the paper one towards the first part of the paper, mostly practical questions. So most of what we have done so far is asking us something that we need to calculate some map work or some physical part of geography that requires some amount of calculation. Maybe you can see some some pyramids as well or some other bar graph or something like that or more maps. So that is usually what is at the front part of your paper one, the practical section. So items eight and nine refer to the following contour map. Which of the following pairs of points is intervisible? So intervisible means that you can stay at one point and see the other point clearly without any obstruction. So for you to be able to answer this question, you must understand contours. You must pretty much be able to look at this and know what the landforms are going to look like. So let me help you with that. So we have the different contour lines and we have the height that is on them as well. So the different points that they are showing us point to different heights across the map. So we have A, which is Q and T. So Q is here in between two hundreds. So let's call it a hundred. We know we know it kind of hidden compared to the other numbers that we're seeing. And then T is at over here at 50. So that line that stretches across, we need to pay attention to that. So what it means is, if a man is standing here, that's the man, okay, a girl. If a girl is standing here at Q, can she see right across here to where letter T is? So we have to check that. So from Q, we go to R, which is 25 degree, not degrees, 25 meters above sea level. Then we go to S, which is 100 meters. So this and this, Q and S, they're on the same height. And then we go to T, which is 50. So we would not be able to see T because the, the landform would look something like this. So this is Q at this height. I would go down to R. And I would go across and I would come back up to S and then I would go down to T where 50 is. So I would not be able to stay over here and see T which is down here because this section would be blocking me. So pretty much that's what intervisibility is. So let's just go through the others. I won't draw it like that for all of the others. But Q and S, so Q is here at 100, S is at 100, so we're pretty much on the same level. So let's go back to the drawing. This is Q, let's use another thing. This is Q, this is S. I can stay there and see that one without any obstruction whatsoever. So, so far it is B, that's your answer. For C, it's P and S, so P is at less than 50. And... S is wherever you're at 100. So Q would be in the way, blocking. That's not it. D, you have P and T. Same thing. It wouldn't be the answer. So I hope you understand that. I was trying to go a little fast. So that is letter B for number 8. If you have any further questions and you'd prefer if I do an entire video on intervisibility, just let me know in the comments. 
So I will move forward based on what the comments are saying. So you have to let me know. All right, number nine. Between which of the following pairs, or we have to look back at it again, between which of the following pairs of points is the gradient steepest? So how do we tell that a gradient is steep? If the points, if the contour lines are close together, it means that that section of the land is steep. So on this map here, the steepest section would be Q, between Q and R. So if Q and R is, yeah, Q and R is there. So that would be the answer, regardless of what the other options are. Why? Because if you look at the distance between each of these contour lines, they're very close. They're the closest on the map. So they this section would have been the steepest part of the map. So your answer for number nine is letter C, which is Q and R. So number 10, which of the following phrases refers to northings? So for northings, that word would come about when you are doing grid reference. So four-figure or six-figure grid reference, that's where you'd hear the term northings from. So just like it sounds northings, it means that the value for those lines are increasing northwards. So increase in value northwards or increase in value northwards. So we know that C is out. We know that A is out. So it's either B or D. Now the difference between B and D is horizontal line or vertical line. So horizontal line is the one just like the horizon that goes across. Vertical that's your vertical, right? So the horizontal lines are actually the northern lines because they would look something like this on your grid, but the numbers increase towards the north. So the numbers increase in a northerly direction. So those are your northings. So your answer for number 10 would have been letter B, which is horizontal lines, that increase in value northwards. So there is already a grid reference video that I did. So if you don't know grid reference or know how to find it really quickly, you can watch that video. I'll try to pin it somewhere so you can see it somewhere about here. Yeah, here. So you can find it. Um, so that's B. Number 11 and 12 refer to the following contour sketch map showing points X and W and area Y. All right, the bearing of X from W is approximately, so we have the different options, X from W, so our starting point is W, so this is where we are, and the bearing that we need to find is off X. So how do we find bearing? We draw our north-south line at the starting point, east and west. You can do that if you want for balance, you know. And then we connect the point to where we are going. So in this case, we're going to X because it's at a bearing of X, right? Okay, so bearing, as you know, answers are in degrees. You don't have to do all of this, you know, if you really, really know it like that, you can pretty much look at these and guess your answer, right? But let's do it the two ways. How you would do it in your exam, you would take out your protractor, you would draw it up like this, take out your protractor, and then you would measure this angle. That's all right here, so you're measuring that angle, yeah? But and then you get your answer but you don't have to do all of that especially if you know time is against you you can just look at it and tell so from maths and other knowledge you would know that angles on a straight line measure 180 degrees so between north and south there so that's already 180 so anything below 180 in the options would have been wrong so this is wrong this is wrong. So you're left with C and D. You should also know that west is 270 degrees. So that means this is also wrong. Or if you don't know all of that, just think about how close X is to north, which is the 360 because we're going all the way around clockwise, right? 
So this would have been your answer, which is D for number 11, 315 degrees. Again, if you're not able to do it like that, it's not a problem. Just grab out your protractor real quick and do your measurement, you'll find your answer. Number 12, it says the vertical interval is, that's pretty much the distance in, the difference in height between two consecutive contour lines, or two contour lines that are right beside each other. So we have 60, 80, 100, 120. In other words, how much are you going up by? We're going up by 20. Our vertical interval is 20. Let's go down to number 13. We are going to stop at probably number 20 or something like that so that the video is not way, way too long. So if you want to see a part two or if you want to see the rest of the paper, you can put it in the comments again so that I can know that you actually want to and then I will just go through it. So items 13 and 14 refer to the following sketch map of an area. So for the map, all right, we're seeing a lot of contour lines again. You can pay attention to your key so you can see what type of area you're dealing with and so on. Question 13 says, which of the following types of settlements will most likely develop between Y and X? So with Y and X, we have a road. Is that a road? Yeah, that's a road. You can tell that it's a road based on the key here. And we can see the road here. It's going all the way across over to Z there, right? And it's between Y and Z. So since it's a roadway, settlements that are formed along a roadway, those would have been given you a linear pattern. So that means it's in a line pretty much. See, just like the word, it's in a line, linear pattern. So that line is what we would expect or with the one that would most likely develop between those two areas. So for 13, my answer is letter A. For 14, oh, we're still using it for 14. Let's go back. It says, what type of farming system is most likely to exist at X? Where is X? Okay. So X here, notice around X, no major contour lines showing us much so we can see that we pretty much have flat land around here so lots of flat land not only do we see that it's lots of flat land these lines they're telling us something it's showing us estate boundaries so you know when you really think about it estate you kind of think in plantation large-scale farming so you're looking in here to see which one of these would actually point to large-scale farming and that would have been commercial arable farming here we go so what type of farming system is most likely to exist at x it would have been commercial arable farming number 15 another map it says the landforms shown at x and y respectively are a uh, and it, they're giving you the options so x is over here y is over here all right let's understand the map first so we have the c so this is zero degree not degrees um units so let us say meters zero meters so that is sea level that means all of this area is relatively flat land up until we get to 50, again, I'm going to say meters, up until we get to about 50 meters in height, and then we'll continue all the way up to 350. So this is not very, very high, so this would have been a hill, not a mountain. So landforms at X, we know that all of this is very flat. We know that it's right, we know that all I hear says so very flat. We know that it's right beside the sea as well. So that is coastal plain or coastal plain. So it said respectively X and Y. So that's the, that's the pattern or the order in which the answers should appear. 
So coastal plane and coastal plane would have been correct for their source. So we know B is out, we know D is out. So we're eliminating the ones that are not going to be an answer. So we're left with A and C. So the difference between A and C is that A says round-topped hill and C says plateau. I'm going to go with A because the hill is a circular top hill, not a very high land form at all. The plateau, I would expect the plateau to be a lot higher and it does not necessarily need to be circular. It can be any, any kind of shape, you understand? Once it is relatively a flat topped landform. So I'm gonna go with A though. If you do not agree, I know sometimes we have teachers on the platform as well, feel free to comment. I really don't mind. And you can let me know what you think. But I'm going to go with letter A, um, coastal plain and round topped hill for number 15. So let's go to number 16. 16 refers to the following image. So we have, uh, all right, I'm seeing what looks like cows and uh, I don't know, probably coconut trees or something. So the landform shown is most likely to be a cave, dough line, cockpit or crater lake. So I'm eliminating again, I'm taking a cave. I don't see no cave. I am also, I see this body of water here. I'm taking out cockpit and I'm taking out crater lake. Yes, I know it says lake, but why am I taking out crater lake? Crater lake um, suggests volcano. It is from a volcanic landform it's a volcanic landform which would mean highland then my lake is pretty much inside my highland so my lake would be inside here so um there's absolutely no indication that this is highland i can see some vehicles over here so right so i'm gonna go with doe line doe line is pretty much a sinkhole with the water in it. So I imagine that this is a karst scenery. So I'm gonna go with B. Feel free to let me know what you think, but I think the answer is B. That is what I am selecting. Let's go to 17. The shaded area on the map above is best described as the shaded areas between 23 and a half degrees south to 23 and a half degrees north. Of the equator so that is the tropics that's where Caribbean people live where do you guys live by the way tell me where you live in the comments below so tropics is the answer for 17 again you can subscribe to the channel so that you can get access to more videos it's not geography only there are other subjects there as well that you can benefit from Number 18 to 22 refers to the following diagram of a Caribbean weather system. The weather system shown in the diagram is a hurricane, cold front, tropical wave, ITCZ. So this is not a hurricane because we're not seeing any hurricane symbols there. I would draw it for you, but I can't draw it very well. It's very ugly. So I'm not going to draw it but it's not a hurricane so taking that out um cold front symbol is not there either it is a tropical wave so you can see the line showing us the separation there so and you can see that behind well you can see that behind the line here we have rainy weather so dark skies here and uh, lots of rain happening here, cloudy, right? And over this side, we have clear skies. And the wind is not very high either. So that is a tropical wave. That is letter C for number 18. So I'm going to stop the video at number 20. 
if you want to see the rest of the video you can let me know and then I will actually make it because I want to know what you guys need help with and then I will create it to help you with it so let me know so 19 and 20 they're both from the map so we'll do those so 19 the line labeled Y represents so let's find Y Y is an isobar so those are the lines on the map that would show me places of equal pressure, equal atmospheric pressure. So the same way that you have contour lines that we were looking at earlier that would show me places of equal height on a map, with an isobar, it is a line, imaginary of course, that is showing me places of equal atmospheric pressure on a map. So that is going to be letter A. And then number 20, I think it needs the map as well. It says the station model behind the line X shows the wind blowing at a speed off. So behind line X. So behind line X, we have uh, over here. So this is showing us the knots, the long barb. It's called a barb, B-A-R-B. The long barb is 10 knots. And the short barb is, let me write long here so. And the short barb is 5 knots. So what you pretty much do, you pretty much just add them up. So that means that would have been 15 knots. If you are looking at a map and you see a triangular barb, something looking like this, on the stick same way then this would have been 50 knots just additional information all right so it is 15 knots let's look for that so yes your answer is letter B that is 15 knots so guys that takes us to the end of our video I have not been on here in a while so I am this is my research my market research to see what you want and how you want it so that I can know what kind of videos to make for you so that's why I'm stopping at 20 so that you can comment let me know what you want me to do what you want me to cover and then I will go ahead and cover those specific things for you thank you so much for watching please ensure that you subscribe to the channel that helps a lot and I appreciate it. Like the video, share it with a friend and let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.